Here's our first example of problems involving the potential energy of point charges. So a positive charge of 2 microcoulombs is held on a horizontal plane. A charge of minus 1 microcoulomb is held 5 centimeters north of it. And a charge of 3 microcoulombs is held 5 centimeters west of it. Part A, what is the total potential energy of the system? Part B, what is the potential energy of the 3 microcoulomb charge? And Part C, if the 2 microcoulomb charge is released, let's say that the object has mass 1 gram, what is its speed when it is far, far away from the other two charges? First things first, here's the picture of the situation with the 1 and 2 and 3 charges, and I've calculated also the distance between the 3 microcoulomb and the negative 1 microcoulomb just by using a Pythagorean theorem, and that's 7.07 .07 centimeters. The total potential energy of the system is the sum of the potential energy of all the pairs in the system. In this particular system, we have three pairs. So uh, the negative 1 and the 2 microcoulomb make up the first pair, that's in red. The 2 and the 3 make up the second pair, and 1 and 3 make up the third pair. So we just add up the potential energies of the pairs. To make my calculation just a little bit easier, I've factored the 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. That's the 9 times 10 to the 9 that you see in front of the big sum. Remember, when you're calculating a potential energy, you take the signs of the charges into account. So you see I've replaced Q1 with negative 1 times 10 to the negative 6 and the Q2 is the 2 times 10 to the negative 6. This also means that the potential energy of the Q1 and Q2 pair really is negative. If you had only Q1 and Q2 in your system and then you let go of them, the two charges would go towards each other. On the other hand, if you had two charges of the same sign in your system and you let go of them, they would move away from each other. So that can help you keep track of what pairs should have positive potential energy and what pairs should have negative potential energy. The total potential energy of the system is 0 0.338 joules. Let's move on to part B. The potential energy of the 3 microcoulomb charge in this system is the potential energy of the two pairs in which it participates. So I've written down the potential energy of the two pairs right here, and I've plugged in my numbers right here, once again taking into account the signs of the charges, and the potential energy of the 3 microcoulomb charge is 0 0.698 joules. Now, if I released the 2 microcoulomb charge, what would be its speed when it's far, far away? Well, this is a conservation of energy problem, so we begin by writing down the law of conservation of energy. The initial potential energy is the sum of the potential energies of the three pairs. The initial kinetic energy is zero. There's no friction, no external force doing work. Our final potential energy is the one three pair, which stays there, and the final kinetic energy will be the final kinetic energy of the 2 microcoulomb that has zipped away. So the potential energy of pair 1, 3 cancels out because it's there at the beginning and there at the end. So the final kinetic energy of the 2 microcoulomb is equal to the potential energy of pair 1, 2 plus the potential energy of pair 2, 3. Now there are lots of correct ways to get to this conclusion. You could have said that the change in kinetic energy was equal to the negative of the change in potential energy for the 2 microcoulomb charge, and that would have worked too. And plugging the numbers in, taking the signs of the charges into account, of course, final kinetic energy of the 2 microcoulomb charge is 0 0.720 joules. And give yourself a point if you notice that I'm missing a significant figure. Let's use that final kinetic energy to find the speed when the 2 microcoulomb charge is infinitely far away. So we are going to take final kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared and we are going to isolate v. 
we get V is equal to the square root of 2 times the final kinetic energy over the mass. Let's plug the numbers in. Remember that 1 gram is 10 to the negative 3 kilos and we get a final speed of 37.9 meters per second. All done! Spread the joy of physics!